Hi, my name's Dave Adams. Welcome to The Core Mechanic. And at some point it had to happen that we covered number 62 on Mike Selinker's list of 100 games you must absolutely positively know how to play. Killer Bunnies. Hi, my name's Dave Adams and I love playing games. At the 2015 PAX convention, one of my favourite game designers, Mike Selinker, presented his list of top 100 games you must absolutely, positively know how to play. The 100th game on the list was a challenge to play a game of my own design. With a desire to understand more about the hobby that I love so much, I've taken on that challenge to design a game, but first I need to learn as much as I can about game design. I'm going to start by playing as many of the games on Mike's list as possible. Join me as I learn more about the core mechanic. Killer Bunnies was designed by Jeff Bellinger in 1989. Now, it was originally designed to be a board game, but around the same time, two other games had hit upon the scene and started to experience a great deal of success, namely Magic the Gathering and Pokemon the card game. For that reason, he decided to make Killer Bunnies a card game, and in 2002, it was finally professionally published by Playroom Entertainment. Since then, it's had its own franchise movement come out of it with any number of expansions and re-releases and a great deal of success around this game. It's been very popular. It plays between two to eight players in around 60 to 90 minutes. So let's check it out and have a look at how it's played. Each player is going to get dealt a hand of five cards. You don't actually play cards, you use a programming mechanic. So you play your first card face down and the second card behind it. Any coin cards go to the side. Special cards can stay in your hand and can be played from your hand at any given time. On your turn, you will flip over your top card. Uh, you'll activate its effect or its abilities or play your bunny and then move the bottom card up and place another card behind it. As you play throughout the game, you'll have the chance to win these carrot cards and they're just carrots with funny faces. That's essentially it. As soon as you collect the last carrot, that triggers the end of the round, and you grab the other carrot deck, and you're supposed to flip through one by one to build suspense. But essentially, if you're smart, you just turn it over, look at the bottom carrot, and whoever's got that carrot and has a bunny on their field is the winner. I hate this game. I don't enjoy playing it. The first time I played it was just tediously long just wouldn't stop and no matter what you did you couldn't get anywhere with it. I couldn't plan anything, I couldn't do anything that mattered and no sooner had I done something which seemed somewhat amazing was it all undone because people's next cards, oh who cares? I hate this game and yet somehow this game has got a huge following and more expansions than you can poke a stick at if you're the sort of person that goes around poking sticks at expansions. I don't enjoy the lottery mechanic at the end because it undermines everything I've worked hard for during the game. Now, the things I complain about are also the same things that people love about the game. People love the chaos. People love the programming. People love the the lottery idea at the end. In fact, some people who I, who, when I, commented on, on social media about how much I hated the game, some of the people that got on in its defense say, I really struggle with strategic games, and this gives me the chance to be part of the end game. And maybe that is why it's worthwhile, because it keeps everyone in the game, or at least gives everyone the chance at the end. As someone who is a gamer, I tend to think that my effort should at least amount to something. I want to see that I'm giving myself a chance to win and that I'm not just being pushed out by luck, entirely luck. And I'm not even talking just about uh, the one single card draw could shift the game direction. I mean, downright, you may as well start the game by rolling a die and seeing who gets the highest number sort of luck. That sort of luck. It's even a little bit more chaotic than that. But there is staying power with this game and I think that deserves our attention. When Jeff first designed the game, he saw it as a social interaction game. In fact, it was kind of a light-hearted, uh, off-the-cuff sort of idea that he was playing around with in between while working on other projects. But 
as he explains, he got lucky. He describes how certain things fell in place and he managed to just find people. He didn't really enjoy the game that much when he first started it, but he found that other people enjoyed it. And so he thought, well, maybe there's something in this and he should give it a go. One of the things that he's always maintained about the game is that it should be considered a family game. In the game, you are killing a lot of bunnies, and that's part of the whole theme of what's going on. However, and he was very clear to point this out, you don't see any dead bunnies or any bunnies dying. What you do see is a lot of potentially dead bunnies, a lot of bunnies who are about to die. But he's very clear that there are no deaths involved. He kind of likes to think that it's accessible to everyone, and perhaps it is. But I don't think that's why this game's popular. In fact, I don't even think it's why it's popular because of its mechanics. It's hard to say in terms of its mechanics what makes this game good, because for me, I don't enjoy it. I've really struggled with this game over time, and, and having it on the list has meant having to go back and play this game, which I just found tedious. But people love it. And I think there's got to be a reason why. Now, maybe I could say it's the mechanism of programming that makes it an interesting game. Having to play two cards ahead, having to think through what might happen and, and what you want to have happen on your turn. But the reality is, is that that whole scenario, all the combat, all the fighting is so random. It's not random, it's just chaotic. There's no way of predicting, especially in a four-player game, what the state of play is going to be by the time it, get back, it gets back to you. There's no ability to determine uh, positional heuristics or operational heuristics. All you can genuinely do is play cards and hope for the best. In some senses, it, it's almost like this game just shouldn't work. And while it doesn't for people like me, there's a vast majority of people out there who love it. And I really want to know why. Now, I don't know why Mike put this on, this, on the list specifically, uh, he doesn't note anything particular about it, he just says, you've got to try this game. But I think there's something in the story of Killer Bunnies that's deserving of our attention. I think there's something that Killer Bunnies has offered the community that has given it real staying power. Now, when asked in an interview why Jeff had expansions, his response was this, money. He was trying to be humorous, and at the same time, probably also trying to be truthful, Yet, I think there's more to it than that. Because in no, no reasonable sense is there, or any reasonable expectation is there for Jeff to have done what he did with the expansions. When he first designed the game, people started sending in emails or, or letters with ideas for bunnies or for equipment or for things to do. And he took them on board. In fact, one of the main features of the expansions is that, for the most part, they're, they're players' ideas. They're ideas from people who play the game and love it. Now, you've got to think about, if I have sent ideas into a designer who may have incorporated them into the latest expansion, I think I'm going to be pretty excited about playing that game, seeing my work on paper. One of the great geniuses of Gary Gygax, creator of D&D, something that he, he's quoted as saying is that uh, he's helped people bring their creativity to life. And I think that's what Jeff's done here, is he's helping people who play the game bring their creativity to life. In a sense, this game is no longer just some standalone game. It's actually part of the life force of the community. So people gather around it, they have fun, they treat it in a lighthearted manner for sure, but they also know that they've had an impact on the game. They've got the expansion with their idea in it. Jeff has very much made a community around this game, and I think that's the staying force. I think right there is the, the power behind Killer Bunnies. I've got to give Jeff credit for that, because he has built a community, he's incorporated people's ideas, he's made the players as much a part of the design process as he is, and I think that's clever. I think that's just really great design work. Now, I don't see myself wanting to pick this game up and play it anytime soon. I really don't enjoy it. I really sit there grinding my teeth through the game, and it's not fun for me. But at the same time, I have a deep respect now. Having spent time looking at the story of Killer Bunnies and getting to understand the designer's thinking, 
I think I've come to appreciate what Jeff has done after the game's initial release. He's really brought the game to the audience and made the audience a part of something bigger than themselves. He's brought people together, and I, I think that's worthy of respect. I think that's worthy of my time, at least. And so while Jeff Bellinger, I applaud you, and I give you full kudos, I don't ever want to play your game. But well done. Well, thanks for watching. I would love to hear your comments. Maybe like me, you despise this game, or maybe you want to stand vehemently in its defense. Either way, I would love to hear your thoughts. Until next time, I'm Dave Adams. You've been watching The Core Mechanic. Have a great one. Hi, thanks for watching. We'd love to hear your thoughts on, um, well, I guess anything about Killer Bunnies, I guess.